All right, you crazy kids, here's your lecture on collision theory and four factors that affect reaction rates. Collision theory, what is collision theory? Collision theory is all about how do your reactants have to behave in order to turn into your products or what has to occur in order for them to actually react. There are three requirements. Particles must collide, particles must collide with enough kinetic energy, and they must collide at the correct orientation. What particles am I talking about? Well, I'm talking about your reactants in general. Well, let's go ahead and give you an example. Let's do two circles and, oh, I don't know, two triangles as our reactants. So according to collision theory, part one, they have to actually hit each other. If they don't hit each other, no reaction is going to take place. Part two, they must collide with enough kinetic energy. So if they're really slow, they're just going to bounce off and no reaction is going to take place. They have to hit each other with enough oomph. When they're hitting with each other with enough oomph, what you're actually doing is meeting the activation energy requirement for the reaction. And the amount of energy required for each reaction is totally different, so it depends. Part three, they must collide at the correct orientation to create what's called an activated complex. So if I have one of my reactants hit like this, it would just bounce off. If I go really, really fast, perhaps it still just bounces off. However, if it goes at a different orientation, perhaps it'll create what's called an activated complex. This is not a product and it's not a reactant, it's something in between. So this thing right here that I've created, we're gonna call this thing the activated complex between your reactants and your products. This is a new term. So in reality, your reactants turn into an activated complex, which then turns into your products. It's like an intermediate. If I were to draw all these things again, I could have you know my reactants, they look like this. My activated complex is this guy down here. And then that's gonna make my products, and maybe my products look like this. This is an intermediate. Alright, now what is so fancy about that activated complex? Well, the activated complex is very short-lived, so this is not something that you're gonna see, and it's very it's impossible to see, but it's all like on the atomic level. What really happens here is the activated complex uses the activation energy or the kinetic energy of your reactant slamming into your other reactant to actually break all the bonds. So when you break bonds, it requires energy. So what really happens here is all these atoms split apart. In that moment in time, then new bonds can form and that's how you create your products. And then when those new bonds form, they actually release energy. So in terms of a reaction, to turn your reactants into your activated complex, you need energy. And then as your activated complex makes your products, it releases energy. Kind of neat. All right, now let's talk about factors affecting reaction rates. Reaction rate is how quick your reactants can turn into your products. Temperature is the first factor that can affect your reaction rate. So what does that have to do with anything? Well, if I increase the temperature, is my reaction gonna go up or down? Let's think about it. Would I have more collisions? Well, yeah. If things are moving faster, they're more likely to hit each other. All right, so by increasing the temperature, particles are gonna collide more often. Are they gonna collide with enough activation energy? Well, yeah, if I increase the temperature, I'm increasing the kinetic energy, so they're more likely to meet the activation energy requirements to make your activated complex. Cool. Are they gonna collide at the correct orientation if I increase the temperature? Well, not necessarily, but if I have more collisions in general, more likely they're gonna have the correct orientation to create the correct activated complex, meeting the activation energy requirement. Wow. So as rate goes, I'm sorry, as temperature goes up, my rate of reaction is also gonna go up. I have a little match to kind of explain this, I guess. Here we have a matchbook. Matchbook. So, will this match right here just ignite by itself with the air? The oxygen in the air, really? Well, not really. However, if I drag it across this matchbook, it would then light on fire. Why? Well, the particles with oxygen and the wood are hitting each other, but they're not meeting the activation energy requirements. By scratching it on my matchbook, right, what I'm doing is creating friction, which creates heat, which is enough kinetic energy, meeting the activation energy requirements to actually have the reaction take place. I'm also, you know, having them at a chance because there are more collisions, there's more activation energy, 
that there's a chance that there's more correct orientation between my reactants. So more likely my reaction is going to take place. So that's how a matchbook actually helps light a match. I also drew an oven here. Why would I draw an oven? Well, you've probably heard of spontaneous combustion. Is it possible for this match to spontaneously combust? Well, yes and no. Not at this temperature. However, if I put it in the oven, it will magically and eventually just ignite on its own. Why is that possible? Well, the oven is supplying the kinetic energy that the matchbook was supplying. And that's why it seems like it spontaneously combusts, but in reality, what you're doing is you're meeting the activation energy requirements for the reaction by putting it in the oven and increasing the overall kinetic energy of the whole system. That's the first part. Next part, concentration. If I increase the concentration, what's gonna happen? So well, let's do, here's my concentration, increase that, what'll happen to my rate of reaction? Well, we have A and B. A looks like a high concentration between my two reactants of blue dots and black, bot, black dots, and B looks like a low concentration between blue and black dots. Which one is gonna have a faster reaction rate? Well, A. Why? Well, let's look up here. More likely I'm gonna have collisions, so part one's met. If I'm gonna have more collisions, more of those collisions are gonna meet the kinetic energy that's required. And if I have more collisions, more likely they're gonna have the correct orientation. So it's gonna meet all three parts of collision theory simply by having a higher concentration. You might be saying to yourself, well, wait a minute, they're all at the same temperature, so how do they have enough kinetic energy? Where is that coming from? Remember that temperature is average kinetic energy, all right? So if I have a temperature of 80 degrees Celsius, half of those particles are actually moving faster than 80 degrees Celsius, and half are moving slower than 80 degrees Celsius. The more particles I have, the more particles I'm going to have on this side of my reaction, they're going to be meeting the activation energy requirements to have that reaction take place. Particle size. Let's take our match. Here we go. And let's try to light this bit of wood. Yes, it's a bit of wood. I'll label it as wood. Um, can I light a large bit of wood with a single match? Probably not, because I don't have a lot of actual collisions between my reactants. However, if I take that same match and I light some kindling, if you don't know what kindling is, it's just small little pieces of wood, I'm now going to have more collisions between my reactants and my products. Well, between your reactants. Ignore that product state. All right, because I have more collisions, okay, I'm going to be meeting the first part of collision theory. If I have more collisions, once again, I'll have more collisions that have enough kinetic energy, and I'll have more collisions at the correct orientation. All three of these parts are met simply by reducing my particle size, which in reality is increasing. Well, what did I do there? Let's get rid of that. Oh, no, I can't. Maybe I can go back. Oh, phew. I don't know what that was. Anyway, your particle size is all about increasing your surface area. If I increase my surface area, I'm going to have more possible locations for collisions between my reactants, which speeds up my overall reaction rate. Therefore, surface area goes up. Rate of reaction also goes up. This question mark should also be an upward arrow. All right. Catalyst. What is a catalyst? A long time ago, I said catalysts speed up reactions. Well, why do they speed up reactions? Here we have home and school. We're going to pretend like your home is your reactants and your school is your products. There's a reaction pathway for every single reaction. It's like how you get from your reactants to your products. And that's like the reaction mechanism we're going to talk about later. Here, it's a pretty windy path. It takes us a long time to get from our reactants to our products. A catalyst is a new pathway. It's a new reaction mechanism that has lower activation energy. If it has lower activation energy, that means you're going to be able to get there faster because you have more collisions that meet that lower activation energy requirement. Therefore, your reactants turn your products faster. So a catalyst provides a new reaction mechanism, and it lowers your overall activation energy for the reaction. Your catalyst is usually a compound, like potassium iodide. All right, That catalyst is unchanged by the new reaction mechanism, and it's not really a reactant or a product. It's something that's just present that allows a different reaction mechanism to take place. An inhibitor, I know I said there was four things, but there's really five. As an inhibitor, it does the opposite. All right? An inhibitor is some other chemical thing 
or chemical species, I guess you could say, that provides a different reaction mechanism that, provide, that makes it longer to actually get from your reactants to your products. So maybe we'll do our inhibitor in blue. Here's our inhibitor. Whoa! All right, so that inhibitor would be also a new reaction mechanism, but it would have higher activation energy. And because it has higher activation energy, less of my collisions are going to meet that activation energy requirement. Therefore, it's going to take longer for my reactants to turn to my products. All right, that's your lecture. We went over collision theory, and we went over factors that affect reaction rates. Remember that you should explain these factors that affect reaction rates using collision theory. So use collision theory. in your explanation. So if I ever ask you, you know, how does a change in concentration affect your rate of reaction, you should be able to tell me with these three things up here. All right, see you out there.